all in 30 feet from a church roof. Get him somewhere warm and dry. A biker is thrown down a moorland ravine. No pain at all. Can you feel me touching you? And paramedic Daz comes to the rescue of an elderly couple trapped in their upturned car. Yorkshire's flying paramedics are trained to deal with some of the worst injuries a medical team can come across and they often have to tackle in the open air cases which would challenge the staff of a fully equipped casualty unit. Now we've just been tasked to a job uh, of North Yorkshire. We've got reports there of a road accident uh, involving a van and, and we think a pedestrian and it sounds at this stage like the pedestrian's been run over and may still be trapped underneath the van. On a remote country lane, there's been a terrible accident. And I understand we've got two persons trapped under the hedge on the other side of this van. Uh, we've applied two winches, one to the front, one to the back of this van, to spot the weight and hold it from tipping any further that way. Even at two and a half miles a minute, the crew of Helimed 99 sometimes wish they could fly faster, and today's one of those days. Uh, Helimed 99, uh, do you have any further updates on that? But first, they've got to find the crash scene on the edge of the rugged North York Moors. What's that over there? Can you see? Oh, yeah, 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 that's that was it. Nice. Nice. Good spot. It's going to be nasty, could not it? Clear of the wires behind. Oh, sure. Rising ground my side, mate. Yeah, we might have to go down in a little. Uh... Paramedics Pete Valance and Darren Axe know the casualties' chances are not good. Being crushed by a three-ton van is about as serious as accidents get. Oh, having a coffee morning in the village for you. Oh, Rambler Simon Cooper has just been to a coffee morning to raise funds for the air ambulance. But he didn't expect to be needing the helicopter paramedics himself. Simon's trapped between a spiky hawthorn hedge and the jagged metal of the van, which could slip despite the fire brigade's precautions. But paramedic Pete's more concerned about Simon's rambling partner, Tom Jackson. Somebody else under there? Yeah, two in there. It's Tom down here, is it? Yeah. Can you hear me, Tom? Yeah. Are you in pain anyway, sir? From my legs downwards. Yeah. Can you feel your legs, though? No. Hey, David, it's Daz. Both conscious at the minute. Both look to be in, well, maybe late 50s, early 60s, and uh, one of them just complaining that he can't, he can't feel his legs very well at the minute. Tom? Yeah? The fire brigade are on hand sorting this vehicle out. As soon as the vehicle's secure, we'll yeah. be getting in and getting you out, okay. all right? And obviously your colleague's gonna have to come as well. Yeah. Tom's still trapped under his vehicle, and he's actually trapped under there with his legs. They're pinning him to the ground complaining of pain in his legs as well. He's talking to us, he's conscious. The only pain he's got at this moment is in his legs. If you get any movement at all, Tom, and it hurts any more, just squeeze me hand and tell me straight away. And hopefully once the fire brigade have showed the vehicle up a bit more, we can, we can pull him out and get him onto a longboard. To free the Ramblers, the fire brigade will have to cut away the Hawthorne hedgerow that is propping up the van. And for Tom, any movement could be fatal it's going to be a difficult, dangerous rescue. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, the delicate operation to free Simon and Tom begins. Try not to push on the van, Simon. The team rush to the rescue of a biker who's plunged down a moorland ravine. You've got any pain in your legs anywhere? and on an urban motorway, a passenger is trapped in a badly damaged car. Police are happy to close the motorway down. Gravity can do an awful lot of damage. You don't need to tell a crew of a helicopter that, but you don't have to fall very far to be very badly hurt. In a wet and windy North Yorkshire village, Keith Ryder is in agony after falling from this church. On board Helimed 99, paramedics Lee Davidson and Simon Kavanagh know it could be serious. It's 
sounds like a serious injury, it would just suggest that it's in quite a significant drop. So if he's fallen on his head or he's injured his back, then it's, uh, it's of concern. The wet weather is hampering visibility from the air and the crew are looking for clues to spot the accident scene. Uh, response car just going into you two o'clock, can you see it? Yeah. Got it. There. See the tall building, which looks like it used to be a church. Yeah. Right, a little green. Uh, there's a guy to the side of that, okay. on the ground. As they come into land, the weather gets even worse. Great isn't it? Driving rain and bitter wind. Their patient is freezing cold and in terrible pain. From the landing site, it's a quick walk around the church to where Keith landed after falling from the top of the disused building. Looks like he might have fallen off this church. We've got a responder here at the moment, so Simon's just going to have a chat with him and see what's happened. And we'll take it from there. He's got right leg. He's knackered, he says. Right. He's got no back or spinal pain, he says. The high wind played its part in this accident. As 46-year-old Keith Ryder was boarding up the high windows, he was blown off and fell on the concrete path below. One of his knees took most of the impact. We're going to board him and collar him, get him somewhere warm and dry before we uh, start giving him some serious pain relief. Just having pain relief, uh, gas and air in a minute, just to take the edge off the pain. Before Helimed 99 arrived, Keith was cared for by a villager who heard his screams and came running. She's been by his side for more than 20 minutes, but now the medical team need to get him to hospital. Mate, don't stretch out for me, don't stretch out. The patient looks like he's got a right uh, lower leg fracture, so we're just going to give him some more food. He's quite deformed, um, so just help him. Just twist the top for us. It'll help him um, with his pain. It's important that we get him pain relief, first of all and uh, take it from there, we'll fly him down to uh, Harrogate from there. Before Keith can fly to hospital, he needs to be made more comfortable. OK, here it goes. For a patient in this much pain, morphine is the answer. Once he's dosed up, the crew can safely move him for the short flight to Harrogate. For someone whose job is up a ladder, this accident is bad news. And paramedic Simon thinks an x-ray could reveal yet more problems for Keith. This gentleman's quite stable. He's uh, almost fallen 15 foot, he's landed on his feet, and the force of the uh, impact is transmitted into his knee. And he seems to have broken both bones in his lower leg, and maybe hurt his knee, I'm not quite sure. The medical team are waiting for Keith. He's going to need surgery on his leg, and if it's as bad as the crew think, today's fall off a ladder could be more costly than Keith could ever imagine. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, will Keith ever climb a ladder again? I thought I'd land on both legs and do a roll, like you see on telly, but I didn't. The battle to free two ramblers trapped in a freak road accident enters a critical stage. I just want to support you so you're not leaning too far into it. And paramedic Sammy finds out what it's like to be trapped in a car crash. Are they trashing my car? No, they're not trashing your car. We're just trying to get you out of this vehicle. It's easy to get away from it all in Yorkshire's national parks. The dales and moors are world famous. But if you dial 999, you could be in for a long wait. In fact, just finding the scene of your accident can be a problem. At the Air Ambulance headquarters, dispatcher Dave Gardner is scrambling Helimed 98 to an emergency on a road so remote, it's barely on the map. If you go from Stocks Reservoir, go, go directly north, and there's like Bowland Knots and then Clapham Common, but that's just like a little track there. We're currently en route to Clapham Common, west of Settle, uh, for a motorcyclist believed to have left the road and uh, gone down an embankment. We've heard it depends on what speed we're doing it when they come off, what protective clothing they've got on, but more than anything as to whether they actually hit anything once they've come off. 
Which has gone down a ravine, apparently. For paramedic Sammy Wills and Tony Wilkes, this incident sounds horribly reminiscent of a rescue last year. Then, they ended up risking their own lives to save a biker who had come off in identical circumstances. It was a traumatic battle they eventually lost. And both paramedics Hello. vividly remember an emotional meeting with biker Graham Chaplin's family. Hiya, Denise. Oh, never mind that, yeah. Thank you very much for all you did for him. Now it looks like it's happening all over again. No wonder Sammy has strong views about bikes. Sammy and Tony are relieved to find that at least this roadside ravine isn't lined with trees, which are lethal obstacles for bikers. But the rider's lying precariously on a very steep slope. It doesn't look good. He is down a ravine and Tony's just going down to him and he'll get back to me if it is going to be a winch job. Did anybody actually witness this happening then? Or have you come uh, but, well, I don't know who the other thing Dave there saw. Yeah, yeah mate. speed, Dave. Uh, speed, we came round, was probably around about 50 miles an hour. No, 50. Really? Taking it easy. You can see sort of like the mud puddle that was on the edge there and she went wide to miss the mud so that uh, it was on a clean bit of road and next thing I saw was just the bike coming down the side and she was going over the side of the hill. The biker's horrified friend stopped to help her. CC Muchai Ngei, or Melody as she's known to her mates, is lucky to be alive. Oh. Okay, so he's, he's, he's had ambulance, okay, just come to have a quick look at you. Melody's friends knew enough about first aid not to move her or take her helmet off. She may look uncomfortable, but being left as she fell could have saved her from further injury. Okay. Melanie, okay, we said you're okay down to your waist, what about your legs? Have you got any pain in your legs anywhere? No. No? Okay, so that feels okay. Are you okay down there? Yeah. What about this leg? No pain at all? No. Can you feel me touching you? No. Okay. Tony and Sammy fear Melody may have broken her neck. If so, one move could paralyse her for life. Do you feel like you're sliding or do you feel okay where you are? I'm okay. Melody's oh. apologetic. Of course. Too much bother. It caused too much bother. Give over. <laughs> there I was doing out. The ravine is slippery and treacherous. Some long grass brought Melody to a halt before she plunged all the way down to a moorland stream. Melody's in safe hands, but the paramedics and helpers know she's not out of danger yet. Everybody all right down there? You've got an awkward lift there, so if you can get let somebody else in between you, that would be great. Race. Melody is one of a small band of women bikers who love the thrill of two wheels. Everybody now right? she's experiencing the painful downside to biking. And lower, nice and steady. There you go, Mel. Does that feel a bit flatter for you? I believe if this lady's momentum hadn't have stopped where she was, she would have continued onto the bottom uh, and been quite severely injured. And it would have been impossible for us as a, a regular air ambulance to have got her out of that situation. You often see us holding a patient's head in line. We, we try and immobilise the spine. It, it's the back that we're concerned about. She's been a model patient. But it turns out that isn't surprising. I was unaware that Melody uh, was a midwife, so uh, often that medical knowledge, it makes us the worst patients. I think uh, she's uh, been quite lucky actually. Uh, her observations uh, seem within normal limits. She's got quite a bit of uh, tenderness to her uh, neck area, which is not surprising, uh, seeing as what's happened. Uh, but to take down uh, one of her arms, but essentially she seems uh, okay. Tony's right. Hospital tests confirm that she's escaped with nothing more serious than a few bruises. A few days later, and Biker Melody is back at work in Leeds as CC the midwife. I think he's hungry again, you might want to feed him again. Yeah, he's chomping on his hands. Yeah. Her hospital colleagues have been giving her a hard time about her split personality, leather-clad biker and deliverer of babies. 
Most of my colleagues think I'm absolutely mad. Um, I mean, I think they feel that I, sh of all people, should realise um, the dangers of biking. But, like anything else in life, everything has risks and it's a risk I'm willing to take. And amazingly, her accident hasn't dampened her enthusiasm for two wheels. Whenever she can, Cece leaves the babies behind and heads off into the Yorkshire Dales. There's just such a sense of freedom when you're on it, and it's just you and your bike, and nobody can get to you. You know, you can't, there's no mobile phone, it's just you and the bike. And you're out in the country, and it's just beautiful roads, beautiful scenery. Well, what more can you ask for? A midwife with two very different passions in her life, delivering babies and riding motorbikes. When I'm at work, I just get on with my work. I'm quite passionate about my work. But on my days off, when I'm out on my bike, then that's what I'm passionate about. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, a workman's been lucky to survive a terrifying fall. But will he work again? Yeah, it looks bad, doesn't it? Mm. You can see there's quite, it's not just the odd couple of bits, it's no. kind of shattered into. And when an elderly lady is trapped in an upturned car, the paramedics have to join her. Here, yeah, I bet you're glad you put your lippy on. Speed is the edge Helimed 99 gives its paramedics, but sometimes they just have to sit and wait before treating their patients. And that's exactly what happened one day on a country lane near York. Rambler Simon Cooper has been trapped by a van that crashed and overturned on the verge. But paramedics Pete and Darren are more concerned about his friend Tom Jackson. He's pinned under the vehicle by his legs. Freeing him will mean cutting away the hawthorn bushes that may be preventing his legs being crushed. I think the saving grace has been the actual the hedge, the thickness of the hedge and the posts. If it hadn't been for that, I think there would have been further, obviously, more injuries. I think if we take some more weight off this van side, we just manpower, it might lift it out. Tom, yeah. you with me? Yeah. When Simon's out and his legs from underneath you, it's going to give you a bit more leeway and we can get, get you out there. It's time for the fire brigade to start cutting. Do you want to, Simon? I think so. Simon, are you OK with me? I'm on your shoulder there. Yeah? I just want to support you so you're not leaning too far into it. Oh, just one minute. Just bring your arm up for me. There's a branch here we could do again. Have you got... It's going straight through my gloves there. Simon's trapped in a tangle of sharp thorns. Freeing him will be painful for patient and paramedics. Try not to push on the van, Simon, as you're getting out. The fire crew are more used to freeing people from the wreckage of cars than hedges, and the Hawthorne is fighting back. Is that hurting you? No. On Simon's out and his legs from underneath you, it's going to give you a bit more leeway and we can get, get you out then. Simon is entangled by hedgerow and branches. It's a struggle, but they are making progress. At last, after a 20 minute battle, Simon is free. We've got a spare helmet out there. We started at the more central top of Sutton Bank, walked down past the White Horse of Kilburn, and then just walking along here for a half a mile, and then we would turn left and back up to the top. And uh, never got there. <laughs> Very relieved that I'm in one piece, but pretty worried about Tom. I couldn't raise him immediately after the accident. I was quite relieved when he started talking. Have we got a spare helmet out there? Tom's head is bleeding. He needs protection. Get involved, Tom. Paramedics Pete and Darren are worried. Tom's been trapped for nearly half an hour. If the weight of the van is cutting off the blood supply to his legs, severe complications could sit in. 
I can understand it'd be quite a few anxious minutes from thinking, oh, why aren't they getting us out? Uh, but yeah, you've really got to stand back and uh, risk assess the whole situation. Is your, are your legs stuck, Tom? You don't know. It, uh, if we try and ease you out? Simon appears to have had a miraculous escape. I just hope Tom's all right. So. I thought he was dead. <laughs> On your call, Dad. Yeah. Two, three, and pull. Now. His legs are trapped. You're going to have to lift it some more. Turn. Yeah. It's hopeless. The fire brigade are going to have to move the van, and that's a risky proposition. Tom's leg, perhaps his life, are in the balance. Coming up, Simon's free, but can they reach Tom in time? Keep your head still for a minute. We're going to pop your collar on, just to protect your neck. And there's a tricky landing on an urban motorway after a rush hour crash. Have your arms and crash, your eater. Now, let's catch up on that case we brought you earlier. Keith Ryder is in agony after his fall. His leg is broken. He was boarding up these windows on a disused church when the wind caught him and he fell to earth. He landed on his legs, but the impact on the concrete was immense. All the paramedics can do is give him something for the pain and get him off to hospital as quickly as possible. Paramedic Simon Kavanagh thinks his leg break is only part of the problem. Brother on his feet and the force of the uh, impact is transmitted into his knee. Only an x-ray will reveal whether Simon's right. A week later and Keith's still in hospital and the news isn't good. At Harrogate, the broken bones in his leg were bolted together but the force of the upward impact as he landed on the concrete path has shattered his knee. It's in little pieces. I thought I'd land on both legs and do a roll, let you see on telly, but I didn't. I just landed on one leg and that all took the, took the weight, so I was in agony. He's now in the hands of surgeon Toby Branford at the Leeds General Infirmary. Yeah, it looks bad, doesn't it? Mm. You can see there's quite, it's not just the odd couple of bits, it's no. kind of shattered into. And today's the day Toby is going to try and put the shattered knee back together. We'll get you something that something that bends, basically. Oh, something you can God. stand up and walk on. Yeah. And we'll get you out of hospital as soon as we can, hopefully only next week. A floor below and the operating team are getting ready. A mind-boggling array of metalwork awaits. Bolts, drills, torque wrenches and other tools you would normally find in a workshop are on hand to rebuild this knee. For Keith, it's vital surgeon Toby gets this right. Sounds confident and I'm confident in him as well, so, you know, from what he said and everything, should be okay. But it's my own business, so I'll just have to play it by ear, see what happens after this operation. The operation is underway. An X-ray machine is placed next to Keith's knee, giving the surgeon a clear picture of what's going on, and his first assessment isn't promising. Front, there's a lot of fragments that are floating up high, and I'm trying to get some of them down to try and reconstitute more of the joint than we've already done. But it really is just seriously damaged. Surgeon Toby has said this operation is going to be like putting a shattered biscuit back together. But things are beginning to take shape. It looks like a knee, I mean, it's definitely a broken knee, and it's definitely mush at the front, but some of those x rays are starting to look like a knee that's fixed, that's sort of held together tenuously. With bits of knee now in the right place, Toby needs to fix it all together with what looks like a giant Meccano set. I'm hoping that in a month or two's time, he'll be up and about walking around, maybe using crutches a bit, but generally this will allow him to be getting his knee bending as much as the frame allows and getting him to take normal weight through it and things like that. He's so, pleased with the way it's gone. Can I have another plane work? but has some doubts about Keith getting back on a ladder anytime soon. We'll give him the best knee we can, and he's clearly determined and, you know, motivated, which is probably as much as anything that matters with, pa with patients, is the sort of motivation and the way they're setting out. He's got his own business and he's keen to get going with it, so I suspect he's going to push himself as hard as he can. 
I think long term, chances of him spending all day every day on ladders uh, for the next 20 years is, is going to be difficult. Yeah, try and keep it as straight as you can, straighten out, straighten out, straighten out. And two weeks later, Keith's back at home. Apart from pulling his toes up, you know, you're doing really well. Good. Um, Luckily for Keith, his niece is a physiotherapist, so he's getting lots of extra help. And this patient is very determined. Glad to be home, really. Each day it'll get, I presume, it'll get better and better. I mean, I can walk around in the house OK, but it'll just take a little bit longer for me before I can start. Uh, going outside, maybe have a little walk to the shop and things like that. Keith's doing better than everyone expected. He hasn't put the accident behind him yet, and there's one person in particular he wants to thank. I mean, I've had accidents before and you never get flashbacks, but for some reason with this one, it, it, it comes back. Um, I can, you know, picture myself falling off the ladder with the wind. And, uh, everything happening. I mean, I'd, I'd like to say thank you to Rachel, who was the lady from Gruelthorpe, who actually phoned up the air ambulance because our mobiles wouldn't work. And I was in agony. I can remember being in agony and she held me hand and everything. She was brilliant. You bend your knee down. Down? Yeah. He's improving fast, but what about getting up a ladder again? I don't think people want to even get in a car with me, to be honest. <laughs> so... I don't think uh, anybody wants me to get up the ladder. No, I, I suppose that's yeah, something I'll have to face. Which is probably a wise decision, given Keith's track record. I've had loads of bad accidents in my life. You know, like a fractured skull and broken arm. Everything you can think of, scalded, everything. But at least it won't be head or out like that. I know it sounds daft, but... You can get over, you know, you can get over this. Coming up on Helicopter Heroes, the battle to free the last victim of a freak road accident reaches its climax. So, I'll take you off this oxygen two minutes while we move you. Now, when your car's involved in a crash, it's designed to keep you safely pinned in your seat. Airbags, anti-burst locks and seatbelt tighteners can save your life, and that's great, until the emergency services need to get you out. This is probably the most terrifying place you could ever find yourself. Hiya, sweetheart. Peace ambulance service, you all right there? Trapped inside a wrecked vehicle, frightened, disorientated, and badly injured. Paramedic Sammy Wills has been called out to hundreds of road accidents. But today she's come to Rotherham Fire Station in South Yorkshire to find out for herself just how terrifying it is to be wedged inside a car and what it's like to be cut out. John. Very well, thank you. Good. I believe I'm here to be your crash test dummy. Indeed you are. We're just going to do a very basic scenario today. Uh, we've got a two vehicle collision, which so often happens. All right, we're going to have you in this uh, car on the left hand side. Yeah, that's it. South Yorkshire's extrication team are among the best in the business. And Sammy's volunteered to play the part of the victim in one of their training exercises. Oh. Despite Sammy's experience, these are still a tense few moments. It's a situation the air ambulance paramedics have to deal with all the time in real life. In North Yorkshire, Helimed 99 is circling above an accident scene, and this certainly isn't a training exercise. Paramedics Lee Davidson and Pat Greekin have been told that four men are trapped inside a car that's rolled off the A1 motorway. It'll be quite tricky, obviously, it's a, a multi agency uh, operation. You can see the fire service are here and setting themselves up, and obviously, with it being on this embankment as well, it's making it uh, quite tricky. As the firefighters get ready to cut into the car, there's just enough time for paramedic Pat to try and pull one more man from the vehicle. Well done. He's out, but getting to the driver won't be as easy. Extrication has to be precise, but it isn't a fine art. Sometimes it's as simple as pulling a car apart 
piece by piece. And paramedic Lee is first through the car's new back door. At more than six feet tall, he's not the ideal candidate. I'm just going to tie this off, OK? Yeah. And then we should be there. I just want that headrest out. Right. And I reckon he'll come out this way. They've decided to slide the driver out through the boot. But he could have a serious head injury and someone has to keep him stable. Which means it's Pat's turn to squeeze inside the cramped wreck. On your count then, Pat. Yeah. Are you ready? Have we all got a bit? Yeah. yeah. We ready? One, two, three, move! The driver has a shoulder injury that's causing him incredible pain. But the most important thing is that he's out, just 24 minutes after the air ambulance arrived at the scene. Back in South Yorkshire, paramedic Sammy Wills is lucky. She hasn't been in a real car crash. But helping firefighters on a training exercise will give her a taste of what many of her patients go through. I knew there'd be noise, bangs, pops, cuts, glass, um, but it all felt very close. When, when I'm working around a patient, I, I'm not aware of how confined or how compact it might feel. When it comes to getting the victim out fast, the firefighters can't afford to show any concern for the vehicle. Are they trashing my car? No, they're not trashing your car. We're just trying to get you out of this vehicle in a safe manner, OK? You're perfectly safe. The team know exactly which parts of the car need to be cut, and they work their way around using a well-planned and rehearsed system, a system that saves lives every day. But extrication doesn't always involve industrial power tools. In fact, as paramedic Simon Kavanagh and Darren Axe are about to find out, sometimes you don't need to cut anything at all. Helimed 98 is responding to a report of a car on its side in a remote part of Yorkshire. Simon and Darren know that help could be miles away. Even if it's a bad crash, they might have to deal with it on their own. Is anybody still in there? Yes. Lady. Alf Mead and his wife Wynne were out for a country drive when they clipped a dry stone wall. Hello there, sir. You okay? Yeah, a little more like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a bit of a bit of a cut. Mm -hmm. Any pain anywhere in your neck or your head or anything like that? No. Give us a shout if anything comes on, won't you? Alf has escaped with a cut to his arm, but Wynne is still inside. <laughs> Hello. Without any firemen on the scene. Paramedic Simon oh, steps funny, forward funny. to the rescue. What's your name? Winnie Finmead. It's a huge relief. Winnie's okay. just tangled up in her seatbelt, but Simon still has to work carefully. The car is unstable and could tip over at any minute. All right. Now then, this is Darren. How are we going on? All right. You've been better, haven't you? <laughs> a bit out of breath. Ah, yes, all right. I am. <laughs> all right. Right, listen, trust me. Just lean back to me, over the back of that seat. She's coming right. out the back door. Are you alright? Don't drop, yeah? You're all knotted up like a sack of tinnitus. What's your first name? Thanks a lot, Bill. What could have been a terrible accident has turned out to be an easy extrication. All that's left for Darren to do is lighten the mood. Here, yeah, I bet you're glad you put your lippy on. There you go. Can you take a course in the driving? Back at the fire station, the South Yorkshire Brigade's extrication team have almost made all the cuts they need to paramedic Sammy's car. There's just one last one, the windscreen. This last cut is potentially the most dangerous. The saw is just inches from where Sammy is sitting. Well, now I have a cabriolet. Now you have a new cabriolet, yes. But as paramedics know all too well, when the roof comes off a wrecked car, it means the hardest part of their job, treating the victim, is about to begin. And that's exactly what's happening on the M621 in West Yorkshire. Two women are trapped in a car that's collided with a lorry, and the backseat passenger, 65-year-old Rita Coop, has taken the full force of the impact. I mean, she's had worse impacts of looking at the, uh, the damage to the car, isn't she? Yeah. Air ambulance paramedic Pete Valance is already on the ground after being dropped off in a field nearby. Now pilot Steve Cobb and paramedic Darren Axe are circling above waiting for instructions. 
police are happy to close the motorway down. Uh, as soon as you get overhead, they'll get them to do that over. Dr Andy Poutney, who regularly flies with the air ambulance, has arrived at the scene by road. His experience in the air means he can direct Steve and Darren into a very tight parking space. Pop your arms across, your Rita. Back at the car, paramedic Pete is carefully coordinating the final stage of Rita's extrication. He has to be incredibly careful. The full extent of her injuries won't be clear until she gets to hospital. Until then, one wrong move could cause untold damage. Given that it's on a, on a motorway, obviously fast road, big mechanism, bit of big lorry involved and, and quite a small car and things, it potentially could have uh, been fatal. Hospital tests showed that Rita had dislocated her hip and broken two ribs. If she hadn't been extricated with such care, her injuries could have been far worse. Just, look, just go down. At the fire station, Sammy is almost out of the car. At a real accident, this would be the stage in an extrication where she'd be taking the lead herself. But today, she's getting the chance to experience it all from the victim's point of view. Okay, nice and easy. Forward back to the seat. It, it was a really weird sensation to be sat there one minute and laid on a long board the next. Um, just moving Ready. without actually Steady. moving. Slide. I was being moved. That was a weird Four, sensation. Ready? Steady. Slide. Slide. I'll take it from there. Okay, feet okay. are clear. Tilt the board. Ryan, support this. Take it's taken the firefighters less than 20 minutes to get her out. If she was a real accident victim, she'd be on her way to life saving treatment. All thanks to practice teamwork and quick thinking. Top bananas, wow. Uh, it was really, really cool being cut out of a car, especially at this stage in my career as well. We get to play at doing stuff when you first start, but to do it now and having experienced it and can compare it to other patients that I've had to be involved with. Teamwork, firefighters were superb. As a paramedic, it's made me look inside of how I will treat and talk and communicate with my patient. It was a good insight. It was a great insight. Sammy Wills on the wrong end of a rescue. Now let's catch up on the operation to free a trap rambler in North Yorkshire. On a remote road on the edge of the North York Moors, rambler Tom Jackson is trapped under an overturned van after a freak accident. Tom, take you off this oxygen two minutes while we move you. His friend Simon Cooper has just had a lucky escape. Now the fire brigade are starting the delicate task of moving three tons of vehicle to free Tom's legs. Keep your head still for a minute, we're going to pop your collar on, just to protect your neck. Your neck's on, okay. I know, yeah. mate. We want to make doubly sure, though, that's all. Three, one, two, three. Oh, great stuff. Come here, Tom. At last, Tom's on the move. You're out, Tom. Well done. The tension there was unbelievable. You know, considering the position that they're wound up in, when you've got a vehicle in that position, you need to, you need to secure it. The last thing you want to be doing is working under unsupported wreckage. Yep, it's as level as it goes. Simon's relieved. Tom won't be walking for a while, thanks to a badly broken leg, but at least he's alive. Five of pressure there, 890 pounds. Agreed, engine control switch. I've right, set both flight confirmed. Flight confirmed. Cube James Cook is in the box. Order and lifting. Check. Tom's nearly an hour from a trauma unit by road, just 10 minutes by air. Tom's in the right place now. The surgeons are waiting. Helimed 99 and the paramedics have done their job. It's time to reflect on what could have been. Over a, a number of years, I've come across so many different situations where you, you arrive at a job and think, well, there's nobody getting out of that. And they get there, you look into the wreckage or you look into the situation, and the next thing, somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, it's me. And, you, in, and I'm always amazed by that. And you go to the other ones and the accident looks like nothing at all. And the people have passed away. You can never, ever predict what you're going to find. It's six weeks after the accident, and Simon's back out in the Yorkshire countryside, but he's walking on his own. Up until the last moment, I one, one hoped it was going to miss, but uh, it didn't. Screech of brakes and lots of white smoke. <laughs> we had virtually no time to try and get out of the way. The following day, 
my wife and, and I were out, were out walking. <laughs> Just amazing how I came through almost unscathed. So for Simon, a miraculous escape. But Tom, remember, was wedged under three tonnes of van. You can't just get hold of this guy and yank him out of there, especially when this, his limbs are trapped under, you know, unforgiving, unmerciful metal. You can't do that. I asked the fire service with Pete uh, if we could ease the van a little bit higher with just manpower alone. We only needed two or three inches, and in actual fact, that's what we did. The fire service guys got under there, gave it a bit of a push, and it just freed him up enough so we could move his legs and, and, and bring him out towards us. You're out, Tom. Well done. We had sustained some quite nasty lower leg injuries, but, you know, he was alive. Six weeks later, Tom's still in hospital and missing the hills. I'll be all right. I just want to get out of here. His leg is badly broken. His pelvis is in eight pieces and held together with metal. But for this man walking again, is top priority. I don't want to do anything about walking. Oh. I didn't come walk. I don't want to do. Straighten your arm out for me, Tom. That's lovely. We could have both been dead quite easily. It was just so unusual, the job, and I'm really pleased that they're OK. I hope they carry on walking, you know down the country lanes as, the, as they've done for, a, you know, what looks like a lot of years, really. How bad is your pain at this moment in time? One, two. One or two, oh, that's fantastic. And just before all this had happened, Tom and Simon had been doing a bit of fundraising. Guess who for? The thing is, these guys had just come from a coffee morning. They were raising funds for the air ambulance. So um, we gave them a bit of a refund, really. <laughs> 